Okay, so today we are moving on for our empire unit, and we are going to move on to the Byzantine Empire. So this is the eastern half of the Roman Empire and how it evolved. So Byzantine Empire is from uh, considered from 330 CE, which is when you had the division between the western and eastern Roman Empire, and it will last to 1435 CE. All right, so the rise, uh, how did it get started? So to start with, remember the Byzantine Empire, as I've already mentioned twice, is based off of uh, the ancient Roman Empire. Um, as the Roman Empire was starting to fall, the, uh, they decided to split it. Remember Diocletian divides the empire to give um, uh, a, a better fighting chance to have organization on the west to take care of the western area and organization in the east to take care of the eastern e area. Um, it will be Emperor Constantine who uh, moves the capital city to Byzantium. Okay, uh, And when he, he says this is our new capital, he renames it Constantinople for Constantine. Um, and uh, remember that will uh, again get a name change um, after the Turks invade, and it will be called Istanbul. So <clears throat> uh, after this happens, you see the empire um, completely split. You see the Western Roman Empire fall into that um, uh, early Middle Ages, the Dark Ages, if you want to call it, while as the Eastern Roman Empire um, will officially become the Byzantine Empire. And for the beginning of the Byzantine Empire, they still considered themselves um, Romans, part of the Roman Empire. Uh, think like um, the American colonies. Uh, most people consider themselves to be British, and it's not until after the official um, War of Independence that you see people considering themselves American. Same thing is going to happen in the Byzantine Empire. They don't consider themselves to be Byzantine citizens um, until after the empire is fully established. Uh, you will see a shift in culture. The easiest way to, to uh, show this is um, through the language shift. So all official documents um, and basically the official language of the empire changes from Latin to Greek. Um, and that's because most of the people living in that area um, Turkey, Constantinople area were m much closer to the Greek culture than the actual, uh, Roman culture. Um, so you'll see a shift that way and, and that helps people start identifying themselves as something separate from the Roman empire. So Constantinople, onto the next slide, is a very important city for many different reasons. If you just look at it from a trade perspective, uh, its placement is perfect. It uh, connects the Mediterranean Sea and the Black Sea, um, connecting all of Europe and then Asia, as well as Northern Africa, um, to allow trade to really flourish. In addition to that, because you do get so much trade from many areas um, and you have a lot more money flowing through, the other major value of Constantinople will be that it basically becomes the cultural center. Think like... Athens in ancient Greece was where everyone went to learn new things. Now it was Constantinople. That's where you went in the world um, to become enlightened. When you look at the golden age of um, Byzantine, it's interesting because it's actually a bit earlier than most other empires. Normally you see the creation of the empire. Um, and then once it becomes very strong, that's when you see the golden age. But... Um, in reality, it happens a bit earlier. So, um, and 527 is really when it's going to take off because you get a new ruler, and that is um, Emperor Justinian. And he, as a person, is not well liked. They don't really like him. He, he's not one of the flashy emperors, but he is very um, methodical, similar to like Alexander the Great with him understanding how to build an empire. Uh, and he's going to work to expand the military. And once the military is expanded, he's going to have military expansion into many areas to the point where bef um, right around his death, you'll see him able to capture most of the old Western Roman Empire. So they'll have a flash of being connected together again. Um, but just like with Alexander the Great, 
once he dies, it is, again, temporary. A lot of that territory is lost very quickly. Um, when he is emperor, you see two major creations that are still last today. Um, that is the Justinian Code and the Hagia Sophia. So the Justinian Code was simply a formal code law, um, basically a listing of rules you have to follow, uh, as well as what to do for punishment when people break those laws. Um, it was so well written, it will last through all the future emperors. Um, so a, another thousand years. Um, and additionally, you'll see a lot of the form that it was created with becomes the basis for modern European law. So European code law um, is really uh, has a heavy hand in the Justinian code or vice versa. Um, code law is very, very important because it's a listing of what you can and can't do, but it's also a listing of your punishments. And we already went over this with ancient Rome. If you list out your rules and people know that that's what needs to be followed and they see that those punishments are followed, uh, they have trust in the government. So same thing will happen in, uh, the Byzantine empire. You'll also see the creation of the Hagia Sophia which basically becomes like the jewel, the, the great thing to show off. And if you look at the next slide, you'll see images. Um, it is a very large, very ornate mosque that still stands today that you can go and see. Um, and it's this great house of worship. And it kind of hints at the difference between the Western Roman Empire and the Eastern Roman Empire with... Um, a heavier influence on religion uh, and prayer in the Eastern Roman Empire than necessarily the rituals that you see in the Western Roman Empire. So religion is going to be a big part of the Byzantine Empire. If you go on to the next slide, you're going to see that while you have official division by Emperor Diocletian long before that, you'll see the full separation happening because of religion. It's going to be called the Great Schism. So a schism is just a divide or tearing apart. Uh, and it's a conflict between the Pope in the West, ruling the Catholic Church, and the Patriarch, who is basically the lead bishop in the East. And they had a lot of fights. Um, they had arguments over the Pope's authority over all Christian matters, um, so basically, if something happened in Turkey, it was expected that even though the lead, or sorry, the patriarch could uh, easily have dealt with it, he was supposed to get permission from the Pope. Um, addition to that, you have the Western Church trying to save basically what's falling apart in the West by taxing the citizens in the East. Um, and you'll see... Um, also a big fight over the priest's right to marry, because if you didn't know this, uh, prior to the forming of the Byzantine Empire, so um, prior to the 500s, all priests could get married. So there was a lot of argument because the Western area did not want priests to be married anymore. Um, not necessarily because of uh, religious purity, but more to deal with they were having too many children out of wedlock and it was causing a lot of problems. Um, and there was a lot of fighting about it as well. Uh, whereas in the East, they were like, no, the priest should be able to marry. Uh, and then also the languages comes back up because, um, Rome wanted all, uh, church services to be done in Latin and, uh, uh, Constantinople, Byzantine area, you wanted everything done in Greek. So in 1054, you see the official Christian, uh, church split. And you'll see um, a formal divide. The Pope and the Patriarch are going to excommunicate each other. Excommunicate means you no longer recognize them as an authority of the church. It means you no longer recognize them as a member of the church. And technically, if you're supposed to be the um, top leader of the religion and therefore the voice of God, you are essentially uh, removing them from the view of God. Uh, so that split becomes the Eastern Orthodox Church uh, versus the Roman Catholic Church. 
Okay, so the Roman Catholic Church will move on to later also split into the Protestant Church. In the Eastern Orthodox Church, you'll see move on to split into the um, Russian Orthodox as well as the Greek Orthodox Church. But they're two uh, separate areas that came from this great schism. If you compare the empires on the next slide, uh, just real simple, you have different capitals. You're going to have different languages. Um, their education, what does it become based on? Um, and then even their art, when you look at their art, uh, you'll see Byzantine Empire t tends to have more medieval looking art because it's very, very religiously based. Whereas the Roman Empire, um, it's more about beauty and physical appearance um, in its heyday when they were um, really expanding and making the paintings and the, the frescoes and the, the art. Okay, um, so the comparison is based on the height of the empires, not necessarily when, um, when they existed at the same time, but when they were both uh, the best. So Rome think the, the ancient statues, remember, the, when everyone's naked. Um, all right, so the fall of the Byzantine Empire. It's the same problems you're going to have with all our empires falling. Uh, there's going to be an illness. In this case, the Black Plague is going to hit your, the empire around 540 CE. It's going to make it very difficult um, because you're going to see a massive loss in population. It's not anything in comparison to the 1300s Black Plague, but it's still plaguey. Um... We already discussed the lose territory almost immediately after Justinian's death um, to the point where by the end in the 1450s, uh, it's basically Turkey. That, that That's all that's left of the Byzantine Empire. Um, and that's a slow process, but it's a constant process. They're constantly losing territory to invaders. Um, you have the Islamic Empire coming out of Saudi Arabia. You have the Russian czars uh, fighting for territory as well. And then you have the Crusades. You guys remember the Crusades? What were the Crusades? Yes, the series of holy wars between Christians and Muslims. Um, so that first, second, and third crusade were problematic because it was a drain on resources, fighting near the Holy Land. People are stopping Constantinople, um, and you're losing a lot of soldiers. And then you remember the fourth crusade? Um, it ends with the sacking of Constantinople where the Christians fight the Christians. Um, and try and destroy the city. Uh, they're never able to recover from that till eventually you see the official fall of the Byzantine Empire with an invasion by the Turks into what will become modern-day Turkey in 1453 CE. And that is the end of the empire. Short little lecture today about the Byzantine Empire. Um, you can expect that we are going to cover... Three more empires in this unit, hopefully before the end of break. Um, so tune in next class to learn about the Ottoman Empire, and then we will also be covering the Aztec Empire and the British Empire. And then we will be done with our unit, and we will be on a April break, and we'll all take a break from distance learning. Uh, so go on over to the activity section. You're going to do a quick little biography read. Um, and just answer a couple questions. This is the first graded assignment in distance learning, so please make sure you do it, and I will see you next class.